Welcome back, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Hema Ramkisu. Thanks so much for staying with us. Joining us on set now, um, Minister of Local Government, Dr. Surat Ramachan. He's also a deputy political leader of the United National Congress, and he is also a senior member of the Cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago. Dr. Ramachan, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. I don't know about senior member. <laughs> I know about an equal <laughs> member. We are all supposed to be equals in the cabinet. There's one um, person who is above everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at, uh, I know before we start dealing with all of the other matters uh, in the political landscape, uh, let's talk a little bit about your ministry and what's happening. You have been uh, visiting various corporations throughout the country since you took this portfolio. Yes. What is, is the update? What is the status of local government systems mm -hmm. in our country? Well, local government, in my view, is uh, for the people, of the people, and by the people, in the, in the real sense of the word. It's all about people government. And um, what I'm doing, I have an outreach program in which I'm visiting all the corporations for two reasons. One is to get a first-hand view of how the corporations are operating, um, their internal uh, operations, whether they are really being efficient and very effective in terms of the mandate that they have, the monies they have to spend. But I think more importantly, I'm also receiving on the day I visit members of the public who have long outstanding grievances uh, with the corporations and who need to have some form of redress. And so far, I've visited uh, Princess Town, Pinal, San Fernando, Arima. Um, I'm going to be at the Sour Lavender Regional Corporation from 10 a.m. this morning to receive members um, of, of the public. Uh, what is the status? Really and truly, would you describe the systems of local government as highly inefficient? What seems to be the, the keep back? A lot of people have complained of duplication, uh, resource allo uh, allocation, and simply inefficiencies as it relates to the local government system. Well, there's some truth in all of what you've said. But it's not a problem that is insurmountable, nor is it a problem that cannot be resolved. In fact, um, one of the difficulties um, I think we have is, is really um, getting more resources for, for local government. And it might not just be a matter of more resources, but the more efficient use of resources also in terms of what you get. Remember, any local government corporation only has so much capacity, and having so much capacity means that they can only utilize uh, so much resources. But I'm, I've begun to put um, things in place where you will find um, a faster a response to needs of uh, constituents and burgesses across the region. And also you'll find that um, there's a stepping up in terms of the quality of representation of um, the local government councillors. Looking at local government councillors, one of the problems that people have complained about mm -hmm. is the quality of councillors and also the fact that it's a part-time uh, occupation, mm -hmm. that maybe the system should be overhauled, that these persons be permanently attached to this office. Well, one of the things we have just completed is the reform agenda, the policy document, which is being printed right now and that will be circulated to the public within another um, two weeks and the public will have a chance to look at it. But I do agree with you. I myself believe that a, a strong case can be made for local government councillors being full-time um, councillors. Local government councillors, just for information, only receive about $3,500 a month and only recently have they gotten offices with a secretary and have now gotten um, some an increased travel allowance and uh, some of the taxes of their vehicles so that, that they are able to function you know, at a higher level of uh, proficiency. But uh, on the matter of um, the quality of local government personnel, I think you always have to have a very good mix between um, you know, people with, with experience and people who really live among the people and then people who can bring a certain level of professionalism and technical expertise into the corporations. And you have to look for that uh, mix whenever you're choosing local government candidates. But it's not fair to say that simply because a, a person might not be lettered, that that person might not be a good counselor. In fact, I think that person might sometimes be a better counselor because really local government counselors really, you know, are their heart and soul of people, the eyes and ears of the Member of Parliament, for example, in the areas. And sometimes they do much more than a Member of Parliament. Uh, before we wrap this part of the discussion up, the al accusations or the stories or the rumors of political discrimination, uh, there's no, the way the system is operated, obviously there are PNM controlled, UNC controlled corporations and those that may have a split with a partnership. Uh, we've heard stories where many have claimed victimization that there's some corporations that are being favored. Is it about time that we have a clear cut system to determine who gets what? Well, you, you have to have that for local government, and, and that's something that's very important. And that will have to be considered in the reform. You know, how do you allocate money, um, monies to local, local government? Uh, if you compare what, what the THA gets, and maybe it's not the, the fairest of comparison to what you know any local government um, body gets uh, that is of equivalent size, even greater size, it will it will really shock you given the many functions that local government um, has to perform. But 
You will see in, in the new budget coming up that um, there's parity and, and equality in terms of um, what has been given. Parity and equality. Well, we're now going to look at all that's happening on the political landscape. London PM can't dictate THA polls. Muni Lal to Rowley, shut up, shut up or be exposed. Uh, you know, let's find out exactly what the opposition leader is saying and then we'll get Dr. Ramchan to respond. It's an issue the People's National Movement is promising to fight to the very end. Herbert Volney was fired as Justice Minister on Thursday by Prime Minister Kamala Pusad Bisesa after conducting her own investigation into the issues surrounding Section 34 of the Administration of Justice Act. But Opposition Leader Dr. Keith Rowley says that is not enough. He believes Mr. Volney did not act alone. Speaking at a PNM meeting in Arima on Sunday, Dr. Rowley said, given the AG's handling of Section 34 matter, he must not be allowed to seek the state's interest in upcoming related matters, and the Prime Minister must remove him within the next 48 hours. And if by Wednesday, Anand Ram Logan is still the Attorney General of Trinidad and Tobago, I'm asking the people of Trinidad and Tobago to stand by for further action. He likened the present situation in Trinidad and Tobago to the Watergate scandal in the U.S. years ago, saying that the PNM will not be satisfied until those responsible are no longer in office. Dr. Rowley also accused Prime Minister Kamala Pusad Bisesa of not answering the most important question of who authorized the amendments to Section 34 of the Administration of Justice Act, which were made in the Senate during the debate of the bill. Did the Attorney General do that drafting for that amendment that substantially changed the law by changing what the lower house passed and becoming something else what the senate passed who made that change dr rowley recalled that during her recent address to the nation mrs pasad bisessa went out of her way to explain that ag ramlogan was out of the country when the decision to proclaim section 34 was taken but he referenced the line taught to him by his former political leader patrick manning it's Mr. Manning who used to always tell us, whenever anything happened, look for the person who wasn't there. I am Chester Sambrano reporting for CNC3 News. Look for the person that wasn't there. Likened to the Watergate scandal, 72 hours to dismiss the Attorney General. Dr. Ramchand, the fallout from the Section 34 fiasco continues. Your thoughts on the calls for the resignation or for the dismissal of the Attorney General? Well, I think that the, the government of Trinidad and Tobago, in particular the Prime Minister, has demonstrated very um, strong leadership in, in this matter and uh, has done what she has had to do in the interest of, of the population and the integrity of, of the system. One of the things Dr. Rowley should remember is that he voted three times on this bill, three times. Once in the House of Representatives, then when it came back um, from the... Uh, Senate, he voted again, and the third time when we had the discussion um, and the sitting on the amendment, so he voted three times. The next thing that we must remember is that the entire parliament has voted on this on, on several occasions. The independents voted on it in the, in the Senate, and uh, then they came back again and they participated. Some of them did not um, vote for it and the amendment in the in the in the sitting, but the entire parliament. Um, was part and parcel of, of, of this entire matter. So that for anyone to, to wash his or her hands now off, off, off the matter is, is very, very unfortunate, extremely unfortunate. As soon as this matter was discovered and the implications of the Clause 34 was, disco was, was discovered, the Prime Minister called uh, for a sitting of the Parliament and went there and um, had, the, had the legislation uh, amended or repealed, whichever you want to use, and then she also took the, the very courageous and giant step of dismissing the Minister of, of Justice. Now, that kind of uh, thing has not happened in our political culture, where a Prime Minister has been very um, strong in terms of the action she has taken on several occasions. I think that's the eighth time that a minister has been, has been uh, dismissed. And it demonstrates that she is uh, consistent in her quest to ensure that there is transparent government, there is clean government, and um, the government uh, remains a government with integrity. In addition to all of that, what you are seeing here is that under the People's Partnership government, a new kind of democracy is, is emerging, a truly participative democracy. The People's Partnership government is perhaps the first government in this country in which, or under which, 
um, people are no longer afraid to express their views. There is freedom of expression. People are no longer afraid to show their faces when they speak. And I think that is an exciting development, that you can have a government um, which you, you trust, that if you speak out against this government, you are not going to be victimized. Speaking out against the government, now the fired justice minister over the weekend uh, published something on his Facebook, and I, I think that was also made uh, public as well, where he spoke of uh, the uh, Attorney General saying that the Prime Minister is protecting him, that he remembered things quite differently, I think, even in some of the newspaper interviews that he had. Would you say the Prime Minister is protecting the AJ? He also warned the population to beware of the developments. The Prime Minister, as Prime Minister of all the peoples of Trinidad and Tobago, the Prime Minister, as the Prime Minister who must ensure that the laws of Trinidad and Tobago are applied um, equally to everyone, the Prime Minister will not protect anyone. I remember a statement the Prime Minister made on the very first day of Cabinet we met. Uh, she said to, to all of us who were sitting there, she says, in this room, I'm not your friend. The business of the government is not about friendship. And um, I, I, I took that um, very strongly to note. And she came back again on a Saturday night, a Sunday night, and made it very clear again to ministers that you have to work within the, the law, the rules, and that if, if you deviate from that, expect um, uh, to, to be... Uh, I would, would he was in inverted commas, expect to be punished. Minister Volney stated that he offered his resignation and that uh, he was he only learned of the firing from the media and that all of it was a PR spin, basically insinuating that. Would you say all of it was a PR ploy? I don't think there's any PR spin in this. This is a matter that is being widely discussed and uh, the government has not attempted to have any PR spin on it. The government has allowed free discussion on, on, on this matter, really, really free dis discussion. The media has played an important role. Um, no one has been stopped, no one has been t t told, don't discuss this or don't discuss that. I think you're going to have um, varying shades of opinion, even for Mr. Volney um, and so on, as, as we go along. And, and one cannot escape um, the different um, strains of opinion that will emerge. Dr. Ramchan, the opposition leader has stated that the opposition, the People's National Movement, will not support the government uh, in any future event uh, in the parliamentary chamber as a result of the fallout from this. Do you think it's gone too far and are you concerned about that as the government attempts to pilot new legislation? Well, I think that the opposition uh, is showing a level of uh, immaturity in terms of um, national affairs. You cannot just say that you're not going to support the government um, uh, blanket and, and not do that when the national interest is concerned and there's, there are going to be pieces of legislation in this country which requires um, you know certain majorities of course the government has has a constitutional majority but the government has never ever used or abused sorry this constitutional majority and I think that the population is going to get an opportunity to uh, evaluate uh, the stance of the, of the PNM when it comes to debating uh, legislation uh, which will serve the national interest and which they ref re which will refuse um, to support. The capital offences bill was such one such piece of legislation. I think that has angered the population enough. I think the population is against the PNM for the fact that um, they have refused to support that legislation at a time when it was necessary to um, uh, affect the crime situation. So that um, I think they are just digging uh, their graves uh, ahead of time. Now, looking at uh, the firing of Minister Volney, did you, the decision itself was taken at Cabinet. Was it a unanimous decision? What was the atmosphere like at that time, and did you support that decision? The Prime Minister is the only one who takes such a decision. That has nothing to do with Cabinet. The Prime Minister took her decision, and as leader, she's entitled to do that. In the interest of um, governance, the interest of, of the, um, the way the government functions, and the integrity of the government, and um, she takes that decision. That, that is the lead. No, no one influences the prime minister in terms of how she takes that decision. She informed um, the, uh, the, the, the cabinet and informed uh, the, the national community.